you know, since I started my channel in 2017, I've been thinking of when am I going to make this video. And uh, it's been really difficult to think about when am I in the right frame of mind to do it. When I talk about this stuff, I don't want it to come from a place of resentment. I don't want it to come from a fuck you, you did all of this stuff. I don't want it to come from that. When I share these stories, I want them to come from a place of like, I went through some shit, here's what you can learn from my mistakes. And I never felt like, in the last couple of years, I haven't felt like I'm really in that place. And you know what, I don't know if I'll ever be in that place. But instead of waiting around for, you know, maybe I'll feel like it's the right time to do it, I think let's just start talking about it, because... Uh, there's no time like the present, and I'd rather not die with this story inside of me. So without further ado, let's talk about the way I struggle with resentment. So back in 2010, I went to university, and uh, it was my first year of university, obviously, and I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, I was, you know, I was a virgin when I went to uni, and yeah, I just was like, oh, women are around, that's cool, after going to an all-boys school, for like seven years and uh, yeah I was, you know I was very excited to say the least so I go to university and I meet this girl and you know one thing led to another we started having casual sex and uh, you know that was my first time first person I was ever with so it was yeah I was really excited to do more of it and I had a friends group at that time and I'd say friends group loosely because we'll get into that later but anyway, this friends group that I was involved with, one of the guys warned me, he said, you're spending too much time with this person, you should like branch out, spread your wings, go and talk to other girls. And I was just content. I was like, no, I'm good, man. I'll just carry on doing what I'm doing with her. And, you know, things continued. We saw each other more and more and more. And eventually it got to the point where I felt like I was in a relationship with this person. Now, she was a lot more experienced with sex than I was, and she told me that as well. So I didn't really know how to navigate the whole, like, catching feelings for someone, and I'd, I was emotionally immature, to say the least, when it comes to creating this kind of sexual relationship with someone. So after about, I don't know, let's say after a few months... I started to feel like, yeah, this is someone I would like to spend more time with. Now, when I said that to them, she took the full advantage and started bringing, like, how can I say it? Yeah, she basically just brought all of her stuff, like her clothes and shit, to where I was staying and basically stayed with me most days. And I was cool with that. I kind of invited her to do it. So then from there, it started to become this thing of like, I'm waking up with you, I'm going to sleep with you, I'm going to lectures with you and all this other shit. And yeah, it was like, I, I was kind of enjoying it. And then the passive aggression started and the manipulation started. And I started to get very annoyed with it. And as much as it pained me at the time, I said, you know, I'm, I'm done with this. Um, I don't want to do this with you anymore. I think we should see other people. And yeah, like, this isn't working out. And so then that's when things took a drastic turn for the worse. Uh, this person's parent was a police officer. And she said, if you don't continue what we're doing, then I will tell my parent, who's a police officer, that you've tried to do lots of horrible things to me. Assault, sexual assault, blackmail, loads of things that I would never ever do ever and everyone who's ever known me knows that I've had a big problem with never like physically being able to have confrontation with people I've never been a big fighter uh, and this whole thing was so alien to me like I never thought someone could be that twisted where they could take someone who has good intentions for them and really try and turn up the manipulation to keep them trapped but, you know, I was young, I was 18, I didn't know any better, so I just said, okay, well, it does, looks like I don't have a choice here. So, I go to meet her parents, uh, drastic step forward, I know, but 
you know, I just thought if I'm going to be in this bullshit for a little while, maybe I can try and talk to her parents. So I go to her parents' house for dinner and it seemed to me like they had the perfect family. Like everyone was sitting around the table, laughing and joking. They made me feel very welcome in the house. And I was just thinking to myself, like, there's something up here. This doesn't feel like the household where the person who has this kind of behavior would come from. Then at the dinner table, the 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 one of the parents was telling me about their love story, how they met, and how it was like a beautiful romance, and loads of guys were after the woman, and lots of the girls were after the man, but they got together, and then they had children, and I just thought, wow, that's cool. And then I went up to the girl's room afterwards, and we, you know, after dinner, and we were talking. And she said, yeah, my mom just lies like that. I don't know why, but everything she told you was a lie. Uh, In actuality, they don't like each other. They shout at each other all the time. They're always arguing. And they didn't really, like, they had some tumultuous relationship where um, the mom and the dad got together for a while. They had one child. And then after a few years, I think her mom had an affair with someone else and they weren't sure of who her brother's dad was. Then her brother and her dad went to live away separately. And then when they came back, her and her brother didn't really know each other. And they started having sex. And when she told me that, I said, OK, look, I, I can't have any part in this because I have my own problems. I know I'm a very, like, strange person, but this is way out of my depth. Like, I don't want to be involved with this. And she said the same thing again. It was that blackmail of, you say or do anything that I don't want you to do, and you know what's going to happen. And then she painted this mad, like, story of, like, yeah, I'll tell whoever my parent is that you are this, like, doing this stuff to me. Then you'll go to prison and all of these horrible things are going to happen to you. And we know people in prison so we can get these things to happen to you. So me, again, like just being naive about it, I didn't really know what to do. So I just said, I will try and help you. As I thought, to me, the logic was, yeah, if she sees I'm trying to help her, then maybe something will change in her and she might start to be a better person. I don't know. And then things just started to progress rapidly. Like she said, from now on, you give me your keys to your apartment and you stay at my house. So it became obvious to me that she was desperately trying to get away from everyone in her house as much as possible. And I didn't, obviously, I didn't really know what to do. So I just gave her my keys. I shut up about it. And I basically lived in their house for like a little while, a couple of months. And, you know, I would go back home because my university was in a different city. I'd, my parents would be asking, how's things going? I would say, yeah, they're good. I'd, and, you know, she told me to tell my parents very little about what was going on. Basically, I was living under, like, blackmail mind control for a little while. And then at the end of my first year of university, she said, OK, we can break things off now. And I was like, thank the fucking Lord. So summer happens and all that. They go back to university in the second year. And then she starts talking to me building up to the second year. And she made me feel like, yeah, we're going to be in a really like committed relationship with each other. But um, in that time, I'd fallen out with the friends group that I had. And all of them had said, you know, we don't even see you. We don't, you, don't, you don't talk to us. Why? We're not friends anymore. And I don't blame them for that because obviously like, I wasn't talking to any of them much. I was just spending all my time with her. But they didn't know that the blackmail manipulation was going on. So during that part of like build up to summer to the beginning of the second year of university, this girl had the keys to my apartment at university. And I didn't know what was going on. But obviously she must have been having lots of sex with random people at university. And the only way I knew about it is because people were telling me, oh, hey, I fucked your girlfriend. And in my mind, I never saw us as together, but I just, every time I heard something like that, I couldn't help but feel bad for her. Now, this isn't a, like, judgment against anyone who wants to have casual sex, go for it. I've changed my mind a lot on that, but this was, like, a contextual thing. She told me about the horrible things her dad had said to her. She told me about getting sexually abused when she was younger. 
She told me so many things that revolve around sex and how men have treated her that when I'd heard how many people were just like she was going through, I couldn't help but feel one, partially responsible because I was giving her the access to be able to do that. And two, just sad. Like deep down, I really felt like I got to do something to help this person because she's obviously, this is all a cry for help. And it wasn't just like, hey, every now and then I'm going to cheat or whatever. It was like as many as possible. And I don't understand how the logic works because I've never been that way. But I, what I got from this was like sexual conquest. Like, yeah, I'm going to own my sexuality. And I'm all about that, man. I'm, I'm definitely behind that. But I believe there's healthy ways to do it and unhealthy ways to do it. This, I believe, was unhealthy because I saw... And she would say to me, you know, you're technically my side guy. I have about seven to ten others. Like, you know, just bragging about it. But then pretending to people that we, well, I believed were my friends that we were together and in a committed relationship and we loved each other and whatnot. And it just, the lies kept building up and I was getting ill from it inside. So the second year of university comes around and I have a new apartment and I say, okay, look, I don't think we should do this anymore. The blackmail comes around again. And then it just came to the point where she said to me, you better be out of this apartment every day for, until I say you can come back. And in that time, I'm going to be having sex with whoever I want and you're not allowed to come in here. All you need to do is you go to the library, you do your work and then you come back when I say and, you know, I just did it. Yeah, uh, lots, since I told people this story, everyone has said lots of different things about it. Cool. Like, I, I was not in the right frame of mind. I was constantly anxious. I was depressed. I, was, I hated myself. I looked in the mirror every day. I was like, you're a fucking bitch. Like, how are you going to let someone dictate your life to you? But then in my mind, the constant fear of, yeah, well, I don't want to go to prison just kept coming back. So I didn't do anything. In the second year of university, things started ramping up a lot. Um, people I knew were laughing at me as I walked past them. Uh, random people would come up to me, like groups of guys would be like, yeah, we fucked your girlfriend and, you know, your apartment's really nice. Like people would come up to me and say these things like, oh yeah, you've got a really nice place. Yeah, in this room, this is your number of your room. Oh, I saw you got this PlayStation game. And I'll be thinking like, wow, that's a lot of people. Like, you know, this girl must have some kind of, illness or some kind of disease that's picking up and it wasn't like it just it kept weighing down on me I kept feeling like it's my fault that she's becoming this way but then you know I, I yeah I just didn't do anything about it so I was building relationship with her parents I tried to say something to her parents but her parents were like her mom kept saying to me yeah she should have a lot of boyfriends and that was a big red flag for me man I was like what the fuck like does that, does that mean what I think it, sh it means? And yeah, like I didn't really know what to think of it. So I just kind of stopped bothering to say anything to the parents. And, you know, it just seemed to me like it was getting worse. So anyway, we get to a point in the second year of university where one of her friends is having a birthday party. And she says to me, yeah, it's a guy's party, but I'm going to go with you because you don't know anyone there and I can introduce you. So... I didn't, go, I didn't have a choice. Again, I chose not to have a choice. So I went to this party and when we were there, um, she took my keys off me so I couldn't go home. And in the taxi on the way there, she just laughed at me the whole way there. So anyway, when we got to this party, like it was in a pub and um, yeah, she kept going outside and then coming back in and then going outside and coming back in. And people just kept came up to me and just laughed at me. And then I went... Um, she she said come outside I need to tell you something and then I heard these like choking noises and then I looked around but I couldn't see anything and I was like okay I don't know but anyway she came up to me and she like wiped her mouth and she was like yeah I'm cheating on you or something like that so I said we're not together like what this doesn't make sense and some guy who was there he just took her into a car and she kept dangling my keys in front of me saying come and get your keys but I knew that I wasn't going to get them back. I knew it was like a little game that she was playing. So she was having sex with someone in the car. Then she opened the door and threw the keys out. So I thought, okay, I can go and get my keys now. I walked over to the car. She opens the door, picks them up again. And there's people in the car laughing at me. And, you know, this, this again, is like games that she was playing with me kept 
happening, kept more and more of these games going on. And I just, I didn't really know what to do. So I called a taxi and I said, can you take me back to my place? But I didn't have my keys. So I had to wait for her to finish with her, whoever people were in the car. And then people were like, why are you with that girl? Like, she's, you can do way better. This is disgusting. Like, you're a really nice person. They didn't really know me. I wasn't, I don't consider myself a nice guy, but nice guy in the sense of I didn't do any bad things. So anyway, I just rationalized it with one of them. I was like, look, she's obviously ill and I feel like I need to help her. And they were just like, that's not your place. But they didn't, they didn't know about the blackmail or the manipulation. So I just kept my mouth shut. That was the, towards the end of the second year of university. Then she found out about this study placement thing. Oh man. So our university was uh, offering a study abroad placement program where you could go to another country and study in that country for a year. In that time, I don't know what happened. Like, did she just started being really nice to me. You know, there was like, I, di I didn't understand what was happening. And by the way, like we stopped having sex at the end of the first year. Like there was hardly, there was nothing that I and like, I didn't really want to have sex with her and she was rubbing it in my face that she was having sex with lots of different guys. So I wasn't really attracted to her. But she started trying to be sexual with me. And that obviously, I, I was still basically a virgin. I'd had sex with her a few times, but you know, I was easily manipulated. I'm not going to lie. She was doing things that I haven't felt in a long time. And she'd always told me, if you even talk to another girl, then you're going to prison. So I didn't bother like have trying to have sex with anyone else so anyway she starts being really nice to me starts trying to do sexual things with me and in my mind like the alarm bells are going off and I said like what do you want and then she stopped and she went back to normal and it was like look here's the thing you're going to convince your parents to let you and you and me go to this study abroad placement in Australia now in my mind I'm thinking yes this is finally a way out because my parents will never let me go so I thought. So she gets her parents to come to my house and basically introduce them as though like, yeah, you know who we're going with, so it should be fine. And she basically convinced them there and then. And my parents were like, yeah, we'll think about it. And they said, do you want to go? And I said, only if you let me. But fate would have it that, yeah, I, they, they said I could go. So now I'm in the most fucking like dire situation I can think of. I was like, what am I going to do? I, on one hand, I've got this psychopath who's trying to like manipulate me into doing everything she says. And on the other hand, I got this massive trip to Australia. Like surely I can do something about this. But again, the manipulation was ramped up. You know, now it was not only we're going to go here. Now it was you're going to pay for a lot of what I have to do. Now, there's another part of this story which I found to be like just completely out of out of alignment with my values. This person and her parents were striving to show people we have money and this is coming out of their mouths, not me assuming. Then her mom was always like, yeah, I want to wear nice clothes so people know I have money. She was always, yeah, the same way. And, you know, the, the dad and the brother, the same thing. And I've never been that way. My parents have always told me, you don't dress so you looks like you have money. You just like, just be simple and don't attract negative attention towards you and don't rub it in your face if you have stuff. And this is where things got really strange. She was getting, uh, she basically did some fraud so that a loan company believed that she was broken off from her parents and they were going to give her more money to do this trip to Australia. And I just thought to myself, like, wh where's all this thing about you have money? And she, she did, basically, it was a long story short, there was a lot of fraud involved. I actually, I don't know if I'm complicit with it. This is all allegedly, by the way. I don't really know what was happening. So I can't say for definite if these things did happen. But this is what it looked like from the outset. And this is what I was told as well by her and the family. So I just, I, I was witnessing a lot of lying, a lot of deceit, a lot of fraud. Anyway, long story short, we go to Australia. 
And like the first day we get there, she starts crying about, oh, I made a big mistake. We should go home. So I'm like, okay, you go home. At least let me fucking enjoy the shit. Because I just thought to myself, yeah, now I can actually live and like do this placement and really have a good time. And then she kind of snapped out of it and we ended up staying there. And this is when things turned really bad. <laughs> so in the first like couple of months, she just pretended like, yeah, we're going to try and make this relationship thing work. And then, yeah, just back to normal. Like, you know, you get out of the apartment. And I went food shopping, right? An hour down the road, walked to the store, got all these heavy bags of food, come back and there's people having sex in the apartment. Okay, cool. I'm used to it. So I leave the food there and I just go... And she starts having a go at me about why are you leaving the food there? It's going to spoil. And I'm just thinking like, dude, th this is this is fucked up. Like I came here to have a good time and I can't do that with you. So I'm going to get a separate place to stay. And then it turned into higher manipulation of you don't want to go to prison in Australia. I could get my parent to come here and make you go to prison here. And that's going to be way worse. So keep yourself in check. So obviously I did. And then it turned from that to like, I started becoming mean, right? I was getting really angry with this whole thing of like, I'm in another country and I can't enjoy myself. So I just started being mean to her. I was being very abusive verbally about this is the whole, your whole life. I just said lots of mean things about who she was as a person, what she was doing, being judgmental about her sexual behaviors, which is none of my business, of course, but that got on her nerves. So one day... We go clubbing with our friends who we met there and um, I was flirting with this girl and in Spanish I said uh, yo tengo uh, el grande chorizo or something like that. Uh, if you're Spanish and you know what that means, shout out to you. But uh, yeah, it's just a little joke and the girl asked me for my phone number and said I want to see sometime. I said, all right, cool. So we were just joking around and yeah, okay, it was flirting and whatever. But I thought it was okay because she was having sex with whoever so I thought, why the fuck can't I? Anyway, that day, she started being extra nice to me, really like, oh, yeah, okay, you know, now I understand, whatever. After a few weeks, then I thought, okay, yeah, like, you know, maybe this is just going to be an amicable thing. Like, I don't want to be with you. I don't want to be in a relationship with you, but we'll go our separate ways. But she kept being nice to me. And in the sense of like, you know, let's go and do stuff together. Never like sexually, but it was just, let's go into the cinema, let's go and do this, let's go and do that. And it just kept like bringing me back to, oh yeah, this person needs my help. Because she then was like, oh, you know, I've got problems and blah, blah, blah. So it was just more manipulation. So I kind of forgot about the whole like, okay, I'll try it with someone else. Anyway, we go out one day and I said, you know, I was, I was getting drunk, really like really drunk every time I drink. Because I was hating myself. And I've been doing that the whole time I was at university. I'll get so drunk out of my mind because I hated myself. And every time I got drunk when I was in Australia, like, I was black out. So I remembered, like, the day after I got drunk one day, um, it just I just remembered, like, her and someone else were having sex in the room, like, near me or next to me. But I was drunk, so I just brushed it off. I was like, I don't really remember if that actually happened. And then one day I was sleeping and when I was dr after drinking and she was kicking me in my sleep saying really horrible things to me. How she was going to break my spine, how she was going to get me back for everything I'd done to her. And I was just like, what the fuck did I do to you? So anyway, one day we out and uh, we go to this bar and I say, yeah, I'm not drinking anymore. I don't, it's not really for me. Every time I get drunk, I feel like shit and I feel like bad things happen when I get drunk. And she had asked me previously, like, where do I get drugs from? And I was like, I don't know. I'm, I mean, yeah, I've smoked weed in my time, but I don't know anyone in Australia who can get us weed or anything. She's like, no, not weed. I mean, like, drugs, drugs. I was like, I don't know. So anyway, we go to this club and she brings me this drink, this alcoholic drink, which is fizzing as, as, it's, as she's holding it. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking alcohol should not be fizzy. So whoever you got this from, no, nah, I don't want it. And she was like, you're going to drink this or I'm going to tell those people this is whatever. So the blackmail kicks in again. So I drank the drink and she's laughing at me the whole time I was drinking it. And then she walked off. And like, I remember I just started becoming really unstable. And I said to the bartender, please, can you call me an ambulance? I think she put something in my drink. And then the bartender just looked at me and was like, shut the fuck up, man. You're just drunk. Go home. I said to him, please, for the love of God, like call me an ambulance. And then I just started losing my ability to speak. 
And then she comes over with these strangers and they're like, yeah, um, she said, can you help me put him in a taxi because he's drunk, this is my friend, blah, blah, blah. And I couldn't talk. So I've, I've been put in a taxi now and there's her and one other guy and the taxi driver is Punjabi, like us. So I said to, I was just swearing at her in our language because that's all I could like create. My mind was fucked like this. I, can't, I think she roofied me. I don't know what it's called. But anyway, I get back to the apartment place and her and this other guy have like me like this and they're walking me up to my apartment and I'm begging the taxi driver, call me an ambulance. They've put drugs in my drink and then he doesn't believe me. So I get pulled out of the taxi, go to the room and then the guy starts hitting me and I didn't really feel anything because this drug had kicked in and I just fell on the floor. And then they started having sex on top of me. So I was passed out like face down like this and she was laying on top of me up like that and he was like having sex with her on top of me. And she kept saying like hit, punch him in the back of the head, stuff like that. And at the time, when I woke up the next day, I thought this was just a dream. But then she laughed at me and was and actually told me what they'd done. And the other guy, when I saw him, I kind of recognized him. He said it as well. And I just thought to myself, what kind of ill person brags about this thing? Fuck doing it, but like bragging about, okay, well, I don't know. And then she took videos and pictures and put his semen in my mouth and lots of these disgusting things. And, you know, this is when I started thinking, like, I should just kill myself, man. I don't like myself. This shit's happening to me. Fuck living, man. Like, what's the point? And I told her, I was like, I'm going to kill myself. And she said, good, you should, because you're a piece of shit, blah, whatever. And that's when this voice in my head started to build. You know, over the whole time I've known this person, it's been, you know, I've just hated myself. But this tiny little voice was building up the whole time, like, fuck this person, you can do better. But it always just silenced it. This voice started to shout in my mind at me a lot saying you are not going to kill yourself because that's what they want and you're not going to kill her because that's also what she wants because I said to her it's either me or it's you and I'm not a violent person so I don't think I'll be able to kill you and then she said look I don't I would love it if you killed me because then you'd have to go to prison forever and I'd love it if you killed yourself because you don't deserve to live and you're an ugly person and all this other bullshit so there I am considering suicide but then also not wanting to let this person win and I'm sitting there like fuck what do I do so I'm sitting there like okay what do I do now and this voice is just saying to me you are not going to kill yourself there's so many great things coming for you and I didn't know where this was coming from at the time but anyway I just said okay so what can I do about this I'm going to try to spend as much time away from this person as possible and it kept happening like I would go out with people and I would get drugged somehow and because she'd be lurking around and she kept doing the same thing, this thing of like getting people to take me back to where we live, uh, have sex on top of me, punching me in the back of the head most of the time. One time I got punched in the back of the head so many times, I, when I woke up, I couldn't see and I thought I'd lost my sight. So I started freaking out and screaming and crying. And she was like laughing at me, taking videos of it, saying, you know, just horrible things. And this is when my mental health took a turn for the worst. Like, I just was like, I don't even care what happens to me anymore, man. I, I, I'm in a catch-22 here. I just, I don't know what to do. And I couldn't talk to anyone about it. Everyone in our friend circle at the time thought that we were in a really committed relationship. They said, you two are great together. I tried telling one person about it. They didn't believe me. And then one person, you know, they said, yeah, whatever, you know, it's, it happens from time to time, just talk to her. So there I am again, not knowing what the fuck to do. So... We go back home in December and in December of that year, I said, OK, when I go back to Australia for the last part of the the, uh, the year, I just want to have my own separate place to stay. Manipulation kicks in again. I'm not allowed to do it. So we end up staying together again. And then I started being really mean again. And I was like, look, I don't want to be here with you. You're trying to save all this money and, you know, trying to make that's why the only reason we're living together you leave me alone I want to do my own thing start talking to another girl same thing happened this this girl was um really nice like I'd never met anyone who'd been nice to me in this way she was really nice to me we were flirting with each other and the girl caught on to this so she took my phone went through my messages and realized I'd been telling someone else back home about some of the stuff that had been going on 
And then it just took a real turn for the worst. She was like, okay, now you're under lock and key. You have to do everything I say, all of this stuff. The only enjoyment I had was porn and Xbox. And then my dick stopped working. Like, I remember I was, um, I was this really hot Korean girl, shout out to you, uh, approached me in this very sexual way. And I was so embarrassed. Like, I fucking hated myself because I couldn't get an erection. But I really wanted to have sex with her. And my hair started going white, like, in the back and the sides. And I just felt like I wasn't even, not even a man, but I wasn't even a person. I wasn't existing. I was just, like, a fucking ghost. And she even said to me, like, you're so hot. Like, can, can we do this? And she was trying to, like, get, get all up on me. And I just... I couldn't even cry. I just said to her, I can't do this and just walked out. You know, I had these these uh, erectile dysfunction and this suicidal thoughts and all of this stuff going on in my head. And I just said to her, like, I just told her the truth one day. I was like, I'm done with you. Like, you're, you know, again, tell the truth, then repress it. And then it just got to the point where she decided, uh, again, like, I'll be really nice to you and let's go to the gym together because, you know, it'll make you feel better about yourself. So we go to the gym and there's a personal trainer there who's obviously taking a lot of steroids. And, um, you know, she was flirting with him, but had told a lot of people there that we were boyfriend, boyfriend and girlfriend. And, you know, I was just used to it. So I was like, okay, whatever. And people were saying to me, hey, isn't that your girlfriend? Like getting really close with that trainer. And I just said, whatever, man, she's friendly. I don't know what, because I wasn't allowed to say we're not together. So anyway, one day I'm training and this personal trainer is like, you know, he's brought into the manipulation situation and he's like telling me the wrong things to do in the gym. So like bend your back when you're doing deadlift, um, you know, bench press from your face upwards. So don't hold the dumbbells here, hold them by your face. Stupid bullshit like that. And then, um, yeah, one day he's like, yeah, you owe me money now for this. And I said, I'm not paying you. So one day I'm walking out of the gym and he says, see you tonight. I go back to my place and we, I was going out with some of my friends that day and she was coming too. And she put drugs in my drink again. I go back home to sleep it off. And she was telling everyone else, yeah, he's drunk. Don't worry. Just let him go back home and let him sleep. So she like tucks me into bed really sweetly and everything and then walks out of the room. So she comes back and her and the trainer are having sex on the couch or something and I just pay no attention to it. And then they start both swearing at me, saying, fuck you, and like, you're a bitch, and what is nonsense? And I woke up halfway through my sleep and repeated something horrible that her dad had said to her. And she started crying and screaming and then told me to get out of the room. And I, I was very drugged up, so I didn't do anything. and just lay there and just laughed about it. So she comes back later on, and her and this guy... Um, while I'd been sleeping, they had wrapped me in the duvet so that like I couldn't move my arms or my legs or anything. And then they kept having sex on top of me and punching me in the back of the head and saying nasty things to me. And this, I, I and I tried to work it out in my mind while I was sobering up how long it had been. But it was light outside, but I couldn't see the light because they'd put a blindfold on me. And I again, like my biggest weapon has always been my mouth. So I started telling both of them that, you know, my version of the truth of who they are and they didn't really like what I was saying. So they were doing all they could to hurt me physically <clears throat> and it wasn't really working. So then they left the room again and then they came back and basically stood me up against the wall whilst wrapped in this thing and the trainer was punching me and, and would take a break, say, OK, I'll stop hitting you if you drink this alcohol. So yeah, I gave I gave in, did what they said, and it kept getting like they kept making me drink until I was really drunk, and then maybe they thought I would forget about everything after I got drunk. So they left me on the floor. Then they left, and then they came back later on. They undid all of the duvet thing, but I was still like in a very sleep like drunk state, and basically the they jumped up and down on my back a bunch of times. They had kept having sex on top of my back, but I couldn't move because very heavy people and the trainer got a few of my vertebrae while I was like leaning over the side of the bed and moved them from the center all the way over to the right it was like the worst pain I've ever felt in my life and even if like I was pretty much sober by then but I was screaming the whole fucking apartment down and people were like coming to the room knocking on the door saying is everything okay and I was screaming like call the police 
So eventually the police come and they must have, I think the guy must have punched me in the back of the head loads of times. So I was knocked out and I was under the bed, but I could still hear what was going on, but I couldn't say anything. And the police searched the fucking room and they didn't find me uh, miraculously. That's God's plan, whatever. So anyway, they, the police leave, they laugh and they get really happy about it. And they, yeah, they carry on doing all this like fucked up stuff to my back. And she's all, the whole time she's saying to me, like, you know, this is what you deserve because you're a bad person, whatever. Anyway, long story short, um, I woke, woke up, a few, I don't know if it was the next day or the few days after, because people had told me, we haven't seen you for, like, a few days, are you okay? The guy from reception downstairs gave me a card for domestic violence. He was like, I think you should call this number. And I'm looking at him like, what the fuck has been happening? Because, like, I didn't see anything. I've had a blindfold on the whole time. But I didn't, I couldn't, like, confront it. My thing is I've always been repressing things since I was very young. Like, I never confronted the truth. And she just kept laughing at me and saying, yeah, you're a pussy and all this other nonsense. So, again, I look at myself in the mirror and my, like, my face looked shriveled. Like, I looked like I was becoming a shell of my former self. And now, again, I'm thinking about killing myself and I was just like, I can't can't let them win like that so we're coming up to the end of the australia thing and she's like yeah go and do what you want now but by that point i was so like disheveled in myself that i just couldn't do anything so i just ate ate my feelings ate loads of chocolate donuts cookies burgers and all that shit so yeah i just started eating my feelings basically and then towards the end of the year um you know we at the time in australia people are saying to me you know you should come back and we're friends and whatever I wasn't interested, so I come back to England, and I just, like, on the plane on the way home, she kept rubbing it in my face, right, so it was like, yeah, we broke your spine, we fucked on top of you, I fucked all of your friends, I had, like, ten sums and thirteen sums, and everyone jizzed on your pillows and your clothes, and all of this stuff, and I just, again, I had a verbal outburst, and I just, like, told her the truth about her, my truth about her life, and made her cry a lot and it was crocodile tears because someone gave her a hug and she poked me while they were hugging her and she was laughing at me and pretending to cry at the same time and then I went and got a separate seat on the aeroplane because we were causing like a massive domestic on the aeroplane and um, she comes and sits next to me and she goes yeah I'm going to get my brother to rape you and we're going to take a video of it and then we're going to show everyone around you so they all think you're gay and then you're going to kill yourself after that because of you told everyone on the plane what I did so anyway we come back to England. I'd brushed it off. I was like, you know what, fuck you, whatever. Come back to England again. And when my parents were like, how was Australia? And I tried to tell them these things are happening, but my track record wasn't good with them. They didn't really take anything I'd said seriously. They were just like, shut the fuck up, concentrate on university. And I didn't tell them about the spine thing. I didn't tell them about anything. All I told them was that this girl is really, like, bad. And they were just like, yeah, don't talk to her then. What the fuck's wrong with you? My dad's a very practical dude like that. He was just like, don't talk to them, ignore them, block and delete them. If they say anything, get a court order, restraining order and all that. They can't do anything to you. So I said, all right, cool. Anyway, she keeps hounding me during the break between summer and the last year of university and waiting until I'd forgotten about everything that happened. And I said, I just blocked her. I was like, don't, don't talk to me anymore. So anyway, she gets a new phone or whatever. I come to university and she starts being really nice to me, offering to take me to go and buy things that I need for my flat. And I just tried to ignore her, but he kept turning it on and her parents were calling me. It's weird. Like, she kept making me feel like nothing had happened and that it was all in my head. So I trusted her again to say, okay, yeah, like, I'll go with you to the, the store and buy stuff I need. So we come back to my apartment. She takes my keys off me and she's like, look, you're going home go home, I'll lock your door for you and I'll hold on to your keys until you get back. And I said, no, I don't trust you anymore. I don't want you to have my apartment keys. And then manipulation again. If you don't do what I say, I'm going to tell my parent you're going to go to prison. Okay, yeah, back under mind control. So I go to my, I go back home and then I come back for the start of university and I forget that I'd given her my key and like when she gave it back to me, I was like, okay, so like after a little bit of time, I'd just forgotten that I'd given her the key because I didn't think it was important. 
Anyway, one day I'm sleeping, and like five o'clock in the morning, her and her brother like come open the door themselves. So obviously she'd made a copy of the key, and they're like hitting me and swearing at me, and like they basically she was like, yeah, you're gonna do what I say, otherwise my parent is gonna put you in prison. And she told me get on the bed and take your clothes off. And I was like, okay, look, I'm going to sleep. You lot do what you want to my apartment, but I'm not bothered. So anyway, I must have fallen asleep and they tied me up. And then, like, they had started sexually assaulting me, doing stuff I didn't want them to do. Then she said, look, if you don't pretend like you're enjoying this, then I'm going to tell my parent that you're going to did all this stuff to me and you're going to prison. And so I just pulled out the only thing I could say, which was, if you lot don't stop now... I'm going to go to the police tomorrow and we're going to go to court and all of this stuff is going to come out. So you decide. They left me alone for a bit, but then they came back later on the same day and they were just being violent, sexually and violent, all of this other shit and videoing it the whole time. So it got to the point where I was just doing whatever they she had told me to do because I didn't want them to continue. But obviously that's what these people thrive on. So anyway, she'd got what she needed and she left. And then the next day, I told someone what had happened and then he just called me a pussy. He was like, you're the definition of a pussy. So you just suck it up and you better pray she doesn't show anyone. But I feel very blessed that I've never given a fuck about what people think. So it wasn't really like a big deal to me. I just thought maybe she'll leave me alone now forever. So she keeps coming into my room with this copy of the key. But I was... I just thought it was my mind playing tricks on me because I was having, I met this beautiful woman at the time and we were starting to see each other and get to know each other. And sometimes I'd just hear the door open and she would come in and check on us. And then she would go. And sometimes I'd be on my own and she'd come in and like just sit there and I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Sometimes I'd wake up and she'd be in my bed. And I'm like, what the fuck? And... Then I changed the locks one day for my room because I just thought, okay, for peace of mind's sake, I will. So I changed the locks on the apartment and I go to university one day because her and I had done an assignment together earlier and it was being brought up for like, we, the teacher, the tutors thought that we had worked together on this piece and copied each other and whatever. So anyway, I go to the meeting and outside the meeting, she's sitting there and someone else sat next to us and was like, hey, didn't you guys go to Australia? And I said, yeah, we did. And she goes, oh, what was it like? And the girl, like the psycho one, started saying all the things that I had done. Got two jobs working retail in a clothing store and then in a souvenir store. She started saying all the things that I had, the people that I had met, all the stuff that I'd done. And I looked at her, I was like, all you did was spend time on your knees. Like, what are you talking about? And... And she gave me this really dirty look and told me to shut up. And the girl next to me was like, what do you mean? I was like, this girl just bragged the whole time that all she was doing was having sex. Like, I was the one who was working at the clothing store. Yeah, my ego was out of whack back then, but whatever. I was just fed up. And I, and I was talking to that other girl about what I had done there. And that one started crying. And, like, I was like, why are you crying? Like, you were so proud about all of these achievements that you'd made in your sexual conquest. But now the truth comes out and you don't like it. Like, what is it? And she wouldn't say anything. She just kept crying. So I was talking to the girl who sat there and was talking about study placements. She was thinking about going to Brazil or something, having a conversation. That girl leaves to go to her meeting. And then the, the other one, the psycho one, said to me, just for that, I'm going to make sure you kill yourself and whatever. I was like, you know what? I'm done, whatever. I had the meeting, came out. I said a few nasty words to her and then I walked out. And then I go back to my apartment and the same thing, five o'clock in the morning or like, no, it was like late in the evening. So they, her and someone had come to my door, but obviously they could their key wasn't working. And so I, like, they was like, open, they were screaming, open the door. I just left it closed, laughed at them. I put a note under the door that repeated some of the horrible things that her dad had said to her. And yeah, like, I just kind of made a little laugh and a joke about it. So anyway, next day, my girlfriend at the time, the one who was really nice to me, she was like, oh, you're bisexual, aren't you? I was like, no, I'm not going to get down like that. She was like, oh, okay, well, people are saying there's this video of you. So, you know, I just thought I'd ask you. I was like, no, I don't get down like that. So anyway, she just was like, look, I don't really care. If you're with me. I'm having a good time with you. Let's leave it at that. I said, all right. Everyone else around me, all of my friends at the time, 
uh, thought that I was gay because this video had come out and everywhere I went people were laughing at me and it did kind of, I'm not gonna lie yeah I did kind of get pissed off about it but I was with someone who was so amazing at the time that it didn't really bother me and that's when she tried her hardest like the psycho girl to do something to me to make me feel like oh my god I should kill myself but I saw her after that I was like yeah this doesn't bother me and I don't know what happened to her after that but suddenly like, she just started leaving me alone a little bit more um, yeah like the whole the whole story being put to rest was just literally I decided to block and delete her she still contacts me every single day uh, not, not every single day every single year on my birthday she tries to send me a message I've blocked her on all platforms and everything and she was like she's got people to like my picture that she knows that I know so that she think this weird shit right <clears throat> moral of this story that I've learned is one not to judge myself because I was scared I did a lot of things out of it two I'm not dirty because I've been sexually assaulted or abused or whatever. The first time I was raped, I was five years old. So it doesn't make me a dirty person. Number three, it's not my place to judge someone else's sexual behaviours. Yes, I think that that's wrong. I wouldn't want my daughter to behave like that. But I, I'm not her. Like for her, this stuff might be amazing. It might give her the sense of fulfilment. It might make her feel empowered. I don't know. But from the outside looking in, I have my own views, but they're mine. And I don't think it's my place to judge anyone for how they want to be. I've learned a lot about how I view myself, what I'm worth in terms of a relationship. I've learned about fear. How am I going to let fear govern how I behave? I've learned about truth. Truth meaning, what is my truth? What do I really stand for as a person? What am I willing to stand for and what am I willing to fall for? I've learned about my character. Even after all of that, I never said a bad word about this person to anyone. Maybe because I was scared, yeah, definitely. But I didn't go around saying, oh, she's like this, she's like that. I had videos that people were sending to me of gang, uh, what's it called, gang bang or whatever, where it's just her and a bunch of other dudes. I didn't send them to anyone, I just deleted them. But this is what I learned. I, I have a very good character. And this video is not about me bigging myself up saying, hey, look how amazing I am and look how shit this person is. There's guys that are getting uh, roofied by girls. We always hear about it the other way around. I am one of the stories where a girl has done it to me many times. I want other guys to know that it's, it's okay. Like, we can talk about it. There's a safe space for it. It, it does happen. There are idiots out there. And yeah, I'm going to call it that because I think these terms like psychopath, sociopath, I've seen how they get off on it. They even say, yeah, I'm a psychopath. I'm going to destroy you, blah, blah. That's the thing is stupidity and bad parenting mixed together. That's another thing I've learned. I was terrified of having children before I had learned what I had to learn from these experiences. Now I know I'm going to love my children no matter what. And I'm always going to be there for them if I choose to have them because I saw what happens if you don't. I've learned a lot about the incest problem in the Punjabi community, you know, and maybe it's not just Punjabis, maybe it's other people, that's the community I come from, but maybe there's a lot of people out there who are having sex with their brothers or stepbrother, whatever it is, I don't know, but I've learned that it does happen, and it's not just in Game of Thrones or wherever else we see it, it's happening in real life, so there's, like, I've learned a lot about shame, carrying the guilt and the shame and the resentment towards this person, it all balled up into one. And I would wake up sometimes just thinking, fuck that bitch. How dare you do that to me? I just learned it's a form of shame. It's a, and it's my ego desiring something else. Instead of acceptance of what is, I now look at it like, oh, you know what? The only reason I was saying fuck that bitch is because I didn't like what my ego was experiencing. But that whole experience in itself is a form of an ego death that I just really wasn't comfortable with confronting. Through doing this, what I do, coaching, mentoring, making videos, podcasts, everything, it's all been slowly like helping me dissolve the barrier between myself and my ego and understand what's going on here. And, you know, I've become a very different person because of this experience. And not 
straight away. Even straight after it happened, I was still a, I was still mean. I was, I was not a very neg- I was not a very nice person. I was very negative about everything. It's only from learning from it instead of repressing it and leaving it in the past and talking about it that I'm starting to change from it. This change started in 2017 properly. When 2016, 2017, I started remembering all my childhood shit and like a whole timeline of events from the childhood stuff to this stuff that I just talked about today. That's what has helped me change is confronting this shit. I had PTSD. I was waking up in the night screaming and crying and like... You know, I was not able to have conversations with people because there's flashbacks of being raped or, you know, having my spine broken and or like her having sex on top of me with other people and saying the horrible things to me. They just kept coming up and I couldn't explain to people where what is my PTSD. I was ashamed of it for ages. And there's a lot of things that I have wished not to say because I was scared that they could still come to my house or whatever. I'm, I'm in service to God now. I understand that there's laws in the universe. There are things that will protect me and there are things that will endanger me. I know that my purpose is to share what I've been learning and help to lead with wisdom for the greater good. This is for the greater good. In the past, I was scared. I didn't want to say any of this stuff. My ego, I was scared, whatever. But I really understand my place now. And if something does happen to me, okay, fine, whatever. It happens, it's supposed to happen. But I'm not living in fear like that anymore. I don't, I don't want anyone else to feel like they have to do stuff based on fear. Because that's not what's going to serve you. What's really going to serve you is to know that it's okay for these things to happen. Not, it's not okay for people to do it to you. But the fact that it's happened, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. They had definitely thought it was at one point. But it's not. These experiences just don't define me. Although everyone else around me wanted them to. I remember people came up to me like, oh, you're a homo, you're gay, blah, blah, blah. I personally don't care about what people do behind closed doors in the bedroom with your dick, butt, or pussy. It really doesn't interest me. What does interest me is how people associate themselves with these labels and then see themselves positively or negatively as a result of that. What I was doing behind closed doors was my own business. And that's why I was never worried about what people were saying about me. And the reason I'd probably, the, one of the most important reasons why I wasn't going to kill myself is because I was in a great relationship with an amazing woman at that time in my life where this stuff was going around. And regardless of what people were saying to me, I would look at her and she would smile at me. It got me through it. We're no longer together, but I was, I'll be forever in her debt. Those kinds of things have taught me that it doesn't matter what the appearances are. All that matters is, are you living in alignment with your truth? And that's basically what I'm learning about resentment through sharing this experience with you. It's been a very helpful thing for me to do to just get it out here. But it's also like, I want to know from you, like, yeah, you've watched this whole video now. What What's your resentment that you're holding? Talk about it. Maybe in the comments section or wherever you're viewing this video, DM me if you want on Instagram, whatever, all the links are in, down here. But just like, let's be open with each other. It's a public forum. You can be anonymous if you want. It doesn't matter to me. But let's start the conversation about what it is that's truly bugging us. And the more you talk about it, the more you can address it, then the less it's going to control you and grab your tongue or like stop you from being able to interact with people. <sighs> Man. I did not expect to talk about this so soon, but I feel like it's the right time. So, yeah, I want to hear your thoughts.